Live from the Austin Convention Center in Austin, Texas, it's The Cube at Dell World 2014. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Austin, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're here live at Dell World 2014, our good friend Sam Greenblatt is here. He is the Vice President of Dell Engineered Solutions, CTO, extraordinaire. And, and whatever and, else and, title and, you want to give me. And, and also I want to thank you personally for helping us get here this year because uh, no problem. we had you on at, at VMworld, we had a great conversation. You said you guys are coming to Dell World this year, so appreciate that. Thanks for having us. No, not an issue. So the big buzz is is Dell as a private company. Does it affect the, the technical wonks like you? Oh, 100%. You know, if you look at the appliances that Michael's been on stage touting, if I would have gone to the street with Michael and told him we were going to use Spark, which was an open source uh, Hadoop uh, replacement for MapReduce, and we were going to use Cloudera, which is a partner, and we were going to take MapReduce from seconds down to milliseconds, the street would immediately have devalued that as technology because they would say, okay, how much are you going to raise on that? What's amazing is we're already getting returns on doing stuff like that faster than we ever thought we You're would. You're saying the street wouldn't have understood the, the play, I mean, wouldn't part of the street say, wow, that's great, you're going to reduce you know, latency and it's going to be a, a great... It depends who on the street you're talking to. I'm not knocking the street, they have great analysts, but the, uh, you know, you guys were just at a Strata Hadoop world. Yeah. And you're talking to visionaries and I was talking to them up at the conference. And we all say, you know, they buy the buzz, but they don't really buy the solution. And if you tell them it's great, they think it's fantastic. Um, it's hard when you're doing these type of appliances to enable customers in different ways. The customers get it, but a lot of the, uh, all the analysts out there are still looking at, why aren't we doing it the way we used to do it? Well, it's very hard too, to predict what the street's reaction is. Because remember IBM had the big miss this year, earlier? Right. Missed in the quarterly earnings. This Splunk, Tableau, ServiceNow, they all got tanked. I'm like, what does it have to do with Splunk, Tableau, and ServiceNow? <laughs> and ServiceNow has a blowout quarter, and all of a sudden it's up 10 points. I mean, it's it's very strange. But ultimately though, right, as, as capitalists, don't markets ultimately figure it out? Over time, mm -hmm. they do. But it takes, you know, Gartner has that, uh, curve of disillusionment. Yeah, the hype cycle thing. The hype cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we actually go through that. I always thought they were crazy with it, but in the beginning, everybody's hyping it, then we go into the 12th of disillusionment, and then we start going into reality where people are actually using it. Uh, so they eventually get it, and then what happens is, when you disrupt, what happens is, the initial disruption isn't always understood. Uh, when you neutralize, they get that right away. And what's even more important is if you look at the next thing, which is differentiate, uh, they get that too. And productivity, they understand better than anything else. All right, so you're going to kill me on this question, but I'll, I'll, I'll throw my neck out there anyway. Are you guys the disruptor? Are you the fast follower? Are you the commoditizer? Are you the innovator? Which of those are you? I don't answer those questions. <laughs> I knew um, you were going to say that. Dave, that's a great question to ask. Michael's going to be here tomorrow. Why don't you ask Michael and uh, you'll get a better I know answer. what he's going to say. We're the, we're the customer company, right? That's, and, and so, okay, so he likes to talk about that yes. a lot. How much of that is sort of marketing? How much of that is real? It's 100% real. Uh, when we went out to start the appliances, you know, one of our appliances is the Dell Appliance for Databases uh, that we did with, uh, now SanDisk, used to be Fusion IO. 
that came from customers saying, we need to speed up Cassandra, we need to sh uh, speed up Mongo, we need to uh, have a better solution, more in-memory in databases for non-SQL. Uh, the customers get what they need, and they come to us and ask us about it, and that's how we build it. And we build it quick enough to get it in the market and test it. Uh, the Oracle one, which is a, our 12C appliance, it is for the mid-market, and I gotta say that very, very directly, we're able to give three times the performance at a significant price reduction, but that's all customer driven. We didn't go out there and say, how do we beat an Exadata or anything else? Customers came and said, here are my requirements, how can you help me? Well, I was talk commenting earlier that you guys actually make an interesting partner for companies like Oracle, uh, who sort of exited the low end of the x86 server business. Um, you don't own a database. Let's call it the large institutions at the low end. So yeah, yeah, the, the, the preferred accounts. Yeah, right, right. Uh, but 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 it, they're, not, they're not trying to crush you the same way they are IBM. They, HP and they are having this urinary Olympics and they're fighting and they won't talk to each other. But Dell makes a good partner there. What does it mean from a technical standpoint um, to to partner? Are you you guys. Is it, where's the focus? Is it on integration? Is it on I'll give you an solutions? example with Oracle. Uh, we work with Dave Shreen, uh, Ed Shreen, and we work with Will, Wim Cohertz, mm -hmm. that are Larry's now CTO staff, before he, they worked for Larry when he was CEO. Uh, they look at enabling us because they, don't ha they do not have the reach and range, and they'll tell you that, to go into the market below the global 500. Uh, they don't have, they do not have the sales force. And there's a term that the great marketeers use called permission. Do you have permission to go into the, uh, as you call it, the SMB, I will not call it small, medium business because that's not a, an appropriate term at a, at a conference. We call it the inst up and coming institutions. <laughs> and what happens is, they trust Dell, they work with us. We've been with them for 30 years we've been in business. So it's, it's really good to, to uh, get into that market. So Sam, talking about the appliances, you and I both spoke at a WebScale event. Uh, it was hosted by Nutanix earlier this year. At the show today, uh, Dell announced the XC WebScale converged appliance that's powered by Nutanix. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, what are the conversations you're having with customers about WebScale? Why is it not just a marketing term? You know, how are they really embracing some of the technologies well, that, that the big guys are using? That's a very, very good question. Uh, I met with the Nutanix people yesterday. I had their head of development, and I talked to DRAJ more than uh, I sometimes talk to anybody else. And one of the things DRAJ says is once they get it in, once they run it, and they see the benefits of what it does to the I.O. configuration underneath, people get it. And, you know, Salesforce, is have, he has the same problem. You go out and you whiteboard how a Nutanix works, the customer will basically leave you as fast as you can, you show them the business benefits of the box, you win. So what we do with our XC, XC system is we actually go in, we put it in with even an Evo rack, we put it in with some of our FXs, it will absolutely do the right job. The term hyperconverged is almost like cloud. It depends who uses it to believe it one way or the other. But what's important is, what, what do you get out the back end of it? And that's what we do with the XC. All right, so cloud. I actually want to shift gears on you. Uh, you were one of the first guests that I interviewed that really helped articulate the value of Docker back at Red Hat Summit towards the beginning of this year. I still love Docker. Yeah, so can you explain for our audience you know, how Docker fits into the Dell Cloud Marketplace announcements that you have this uh, week? Actually, you will see, you should see here on the floor that we have some Docker. I, I believe it made, made it the conference. You got to remember, I see everything before it comes out. 
Uh, and I'm not pre-announcing anything, and it's not going to affect our stock, by the way. So uh, <laughs> what's going to happen is we see Docker as a way to move applications between different cloud platforms without a lot of hard work. We have our Dow Cloud Manager that talks to Docker containers and moves it. It's really the PaaS layer and the SaaS layer brought into a container. And what we like about it is it's the same way that if you took a, let's say iOS was a cloud on a phone. When you bring something from the App Store, everything you need to run and instantiate itself is in the app. Everything is in Docker. As you know that Microsoft and TechEd announced they have a relationship with Docker now. Uh, Red Hat has announced they have a relationship with Docker. And uh, VMware has announced that they're going to support Docker. And what, what you're seeing is it's a new form of compute. And it's not a new style, but it's a new form of compute. And I shouldn't have said new style. <laughs> uh, but it's a new <laughs> form of compute where you're containerizing everything you need to deploy. So, you were very excited about the Evo Rail announcement Still am. At, at VMworld. Um, why, what excites you about Evo Rail? Um, I can't tell you the customers. Uh, we've sold some government customers that you would be surprised at. Um, the, uh, what is exciting about it is it's deployable very quickly in 12 and a half minutes. Uh, Mornay, who's running around from VMware, who is the creator of it, has his 12-year-old son able to do it. He does it in 10, I don't know how he does it, do it in 12, 12 and a half. But what's happening is when a customer wants to deploy a VMware environment in an environment that is not in a data center, the rail is the best thing to use. And I'm saying it's very, we still like Vertex for uh, campus computing. This is not campus computing, I would call this uh, middle between the, da the data center and the campus where you see these things deployed. Where they're being deployed and we're still waiting for the final release of Horizon, which is the VMware VDI. Steve Lala, who's here at the show, will tell you. Um, the people who are buying it, like Oakland Schools, when I talk to you, are buying it for a VDI because they don't need a professional staff to get this up and running in three or four days. They get it up in less than an hour. That's amazing to me, with all the simplification we're doing in the businesses, the services business still is, continues to be large. It's 45% of the Hadoop's end is on services. Um, it's it, the, the, the VAR community, the reseller community, still adding value in services. It's a very labor-intensive business that we're in. Um, oh, absolutely. Do, is that going to change, or are we just going to find new ways to deploy that labor? My favorite analogy, we started out by talking about click and clack, mm. and you know the, the news about clack, and may rest in peace. Uh, the one thing about a car today, when you get your Tesla, and I know you have a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I will one day. <laughs> okay, Stu has one, I'm sure. But, you don't go under the hood to play with it anymore. Uh, I have a new BMW. When I open the hood, there's a big sign, do not lift this barrier. Uh, you tune it through the console, and a uh, service that used to take half a day now takes an hour. You're going to see that same type of mentality moving down into our business. Now that service that used to take half a day would cost a couple grand, <laughs> right? BMW Does it still cost a couple no, grand? BMW, if you buy, and I'm not doing commercial, they embed all the service in the price of the car now. So, of course, you can get it serviced as much as you want, Dave. So I, I have an old BMW in my garage that get, I have to 
re refurb, and, and I could I could actually go in there and you know mess with the carburetor and the spark plugs Not and everything anymore. else. <laughs> the way they gap a, a spark plug right now is they go into the underboard computer and they gap it. It's all done electronically. And when you get your I eight, you'll know all about <laughs> it. <laughs> so, are you are you th are you thinking that? the actual service component of our industry will start to attenuate. Not that it's growing fast, it's not. It'll but be it's focused so in different areas. So Our, more higher up the stack, adding value, applications mm -hmm. orientation. You heard Michael today talk about Pro Support Plus, mm -hmm. one of my favorite products. Why is that so valuable to them? It's because it's a remote diagnostic, remote repair within 24 hours and uh, Customers love it because they don't have to worry about it. Anything that a customer doesn't have to worry about, they love. And we had this product right by us called ASM, which is a heterogeneous provisioning and management tool. Why do customers love it? They're not even using things like uh, UCS Manager in their box. They're using us because it's simpler. Simple is always the winner in our industry from the very beginning. I want to ask your opinion, because you've got a lot of them, on what's happening. We sort of started the conversation with talking about you know, private versus public. There's all these tensions on public companies now. That's why IBM sold the 686 business, that's why HP's splitting up, EMC, Elliott Management has Joe Tucci in a headlock, but by the way, I've said it's not going to happen. They're not going to spin out VMware. But there's all these pressures intentions. What's going on, in your opinion? <laughs> I'll tell you from talking to technicians, because I can't really be a procrastinator, no, prognosticator of uh, future financial results for obvious reasons. Yeah, what's happening, for, it's the, tech, the underlying the technology, underlying what's technology, it telling you, the crystal ball? If you really look at the way a corporation is set up, it is set up, once it gets products out there, to sustain it. It's basically business as usual. There, if I were to draw a quadrant, and I've talked to Jeff Moore about this quite a bit, uh, this isn't a chasm, this is a, a diagram. What you're going to see is a majority of the people are sitting up here maintaining the day-to-day, -day, servicing it, selling it, and then underneath that, you have a group that's trying to get productivity out of it, get the dollars out, uh, get the activist shareholders feeling good about the investment in the company. But on the other side of the equation, you have people who, want, who are creating differentiation products through disruption, and people who have to go fast and quickly, because there's no slow once you start to go in the market to neutralize or disrupt. And what's happening is, you saw Ghostbusters. This is a stream, and this is a stream. The moment Don't you cross the streams, you, you cross those streams, <laughs> the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man will show up. <laughs> and what you're seeing is by taking it, and uh, other companies have done this successfully. You can't let the culture of the business as usual impact the disruption. And what you're seeing in the disaggregation is people are recognizing that, and where we once thought conglomerations of products, or basically, and I butchered a word, uh, large co companies, I don't really see large companies being the answer. Look, I was at HP while Mark was consolidating everything, and uh, it's a great, great concept but in today's market, with the speed that you need to get to market, with the change of pace and technology, you have to have both these camps. And what you're going to do is, when you need a spin out to create something and get it out of the culture, you see a lot of these large companies doing it. So what does that mean for Dell, which is a huge conglomerate? Um, that's the proper word, conglomerate. Uh, Dell actually treats both sides almost they work together you don't cross the streams and when it becomes really part of the mainstream it moves up into the business as usual 
Most public companies can't do that because the investment to do that requires something that most of the market doesn't understand today. So we're pretty good at that. And Treat it as a life cycle. Yep. Mm. They're going to go through the life cycle of all the quadrants. I mean, that may be making any sense. Oh, it can make sense. But well, I mean, you get the patience to do that. Whereas if you're a public company, the, the, you don't have the patience. Yeah. And that's what Michael has brought us, the ability to have the patience to actually, you know, Michael's idea of appliances and Marius' idea of getting these done, I can't see this being done in too many companies. We'll have to ask, Stu, we'll have to ask Michael if he's a patient man tomorrow when he's on. <laughs> no, no, when it comes to, to getting it into the market, remember I said speed. That speed means uh, have out some revenue with it too. Larry yeah. Ellison, Michael Dell, they don't just seem to like patient men yeah. to me. Yeah. Well, Larry actually is a patient man when he likes the technology. Well, Look at Fusion. Look at uh, <laughs> Times 10, uh, his in-memory database. Yeah. I'm not going to go to That's Fusion. Right. By the way, I love Oracle, a great partner. Not saying anything about their technology strategy. I love yeah. Oracle too. So, so Sam, before, before we let you go, I, I needed to get your update on OpenStack. Since mm -hmm. OpenStack Paris is going on this week, I uh, saw you when we were at Atlanta. Um, I was you, supposed to be there. Yeah, why, why are you and I not in Paris? You know, I, uh, I know my wife had her bags packed. When so. Michael gave me an opportunity to be in uh, Austin over Paris, yeah. I jumped at Austin. Uh, no, <laughs> why we're not at the OpenStack Summit is OpenStack's going through a very interesting change over time. Uh, a lot of large companies are investing, a lot of customers, but what we're, we're seeing is the uh, Red Hat, as you know, we work with Comier and Red Hat, in commercializing it, you've got to do it in such a way where there are parts of OpenStack that sometimes has issues. I'm not going to go into which ones they are, and what we're doing with... Uh, we'll talk to Tom Burns about Neutron in the next segment. So. I'm not talking about Neutron. I never heard of the product in my life. But <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, what's happening with OpenStack? We're going from infancy, uh, like we did with Linux 2.0, and then if you remember, we went right to 4.0 and it started to grow. Uh, we're just going into the 4.0 stage of OpenStack. I um, still love the product. So uh, when, when I look at the cloud marketplace, do you expect to have OpenStack clouds as part of the marketplace? Of course. Yeah. Uh, but, you, but Dell's not planning to stand up their own <laughs> OpenStack powered cloud at this point. I'd rather you ask somebody else that <laughs> instead of me. But I will tell you, the cloud broker or cloud market strategy is brilliant. Um, you take, you basically give the customer a choice of what he wants to run on, or she wants to run on. So, well, so you, you guys obviously are pretty agnostic when it comes to clouds. You're actually supporting moving data to and from AWS, Google. Absolutely. You know, wherever you wherever you want, Mr. Customer, Ms. Customer, we'll put your data, help you. Your your view, I believe, of the world is that is similar to many enterprise companies, which is op the opposite of Andy Jassy's, who believes <laughs> that there will be very few companies that will own their own data centers in the future, and those that do will be very small data centers. And where are you going to your next conference? So, <laughs> and we're going to AWS, so my question to you is, and, and I know when you talk to customers, it's very clear, they don't want to put all their data into the public cloud. But here's my question. At the scale economies that uh, Google and, and Amazon can achieve, why don't they eventually overwhelm from a cost standpoint in this race to zero, the economics of data center infrastructure? Well, you're going to be talking now, very shortly. Yeah. The advantage is storage. The fact we can put a uh, petabytes in maybe three to four U is amazing. Uh, and the ability to disaggregate the compute, which Ashley talked about, mm -hmm. makes the private cloud much more attractive than it did four years ago when AWS hit its cycle. I think AD, I'm an AWS user. I'm be, uh, yeah, us too, as you know. Okay, and um, 
I still like the product, but if I'm going to put Mission Critical out there, it's not going to be in my AWS account. It's going to be in something I totally control. And, and so from a practitioner's perspective, why is that? Is it because it's transparency? Security, is it security? Uh, was communications. It, but, but, they get, but they focus on security, but it's not the security that you want. Is that right? Or? Uh, Security is one of those amorphous concepts, and we got better people at Bill to talk about security than I. Uh, I always love when SecureWorks gives us our yearly update on security. <laughs> yeah. And you realize how vulnerable you, go, you really oh, are. Right, every year you feel um, like less secure, right? Yeah. Look, there's no privacy and there's no real <laughs> overall security unless you do it yourself. So, um, no matter how many shredders I have, I always wake up in the middle of the night thinking somebody's piecing together my tax return <laughs> at the dump. You know, what's happened is what we know now versus we knew then is very different. Azure is a great platform also. Uh, you saw CPS out on the floor, what we called Project San Diego that we announced with Microsoft. Uh, the reason people want that is because they want it on their premise, where they can control it, and the MSPs want it so they can get standard up quickly, but what's surprising is the majority swing is customers who want to put it together. Mm -hmm. All right, Sam, well listen, thanks very much for coming by theCUBE, as always, a pleasure. Oh, and, I, uh, I enjoyed talking to you guys. And John, it's a shame I didn't get to see your lovely face. Yeah, we miss Furrier here, but uh, we'll see him He's next week. He's in Paris, right? Yeah, <laughs> he wishes he's in Paris. Okay. Is, all right, hey, Guys, thanks very much for coming on. It's always a pleasure. You. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live at Dell World 2014. Be right back. You got me.